Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know what mass spectrometry is and how it works. So now let's get a closer look at mass spectra and see what kind of information we can get from these in the way of characterizing compounds to determine their structure. As we recall, on a mass spectrum, we can take the horizontal axis to be representative of the molecular mass of these fragments. And by identifying possible fragments based on molecular mass, we can corroborate molecular structures. For example, take a look at this mass spectrum for acetone. When acetone is broken up into fragments, there are only a few possibilities, so we should be able to assign these peaks by looking at the molecular masses. First, we should note that some of the sample makes it through without being broken apart. So when we look at the rightmost data, we can presume that this includes the molecular ion peak. So this is acetone, which is ionized, but intact. That's why it shows up at 58, because that's the molecular mass of acetone. It is worth noting that some molecules fragment so easily that none of the molecule makes it to the detector intact, so the molecular ion peak is not present, but usually it will be present. We will also find what is called the M plus 1 peak at 59. This is due to the relative abundance of carbon-13. Since around 1% of all carbon atoms are carbon-13, then some small proportion of acetone molecules will have a carbon-13 nuclide somewhere in the molecule, giving it a mass of 59. Most of the very small peaks found on a mass spectrum are associated with fragments that contain one of the less abundant isotopes of a particular element, so it is good to identify them, but they do not represent the bulk of the relevant information. The taller the peak, the greater the abundance of the fragment that is responsible for it, so let's now look at what is called the base peak. This refers to the tallest or most intense peak on the spectrum, which is set to 100%, and all other peaks will be relative to this value. In this case, the base peak occurs at 43. It is easy to identify this as the fragment that remains if one methyl group has been removed. A methyl group has a mass of 15, so subtracting 15 from 58 gives us 43. The last major peak occurs at 15, and given what we just said about methyl groups, this is also easy to identify as the methyl group itself. And as we said, the rest of the small peaks will typically correspond to variations of the major fragments involving different isotopes, which explains their very low abundance. To further solidify this concept, take a look at the mass spectrum for straight-chain hexane. We get a molecular ion peak at 86, which corresponds with the molecular mass. Then we can see peaks that correspond with progressively smaller fragments as we begin to remove one carbon at a time. So there is a pentyl cation, a butyl, propyl, and ethyl with the appropriate masses. This is more straightforward as it is a simple hydrocarbon, but specific functional groups have characteristic types of fragmentation that makes them possible to identify as well. So getting a mass spectrum is a great way to determine the molecular formula of a compound and its structure. We simply identify the molecular ion peak to find its molecular mass, and then analyze the rest of the data to identify potential fragments. Putting these fragments together to give something with the correct molecular mass is likely to yield the correct structure. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.